welcome, welcome. So this is the new build. So this is Ebrit's a small map, which is more intense, and it also has the classic dig in trenches mode. So you start with trenches. This is uh, we call Tannenberg. It's actually a much bigger map. So for people that want to try more logistics. And then the Dolomites is basically a, <clears throat> a showcase map. But I'm going to show you the new stuff in the build. Thank you. So because the Voxel is still in development, the Voxel system, so it has a, takes a little bit of chance to load up. There we are. So in this mode, I call the Trenches Classic. You start with a few troops already in a trench with a few defenses. And the idea is, especially with in terms to level design, is that we place the trenches in a way that the player might think, oh, it'd be clever to connect from here to here, or, or whatever. Um, so let's start with the basics. Digging is a well, simulation, so we have the time and dates. You can go faster, slower, pause, or go slow-mo. And the first thing we need to think about is the officer. And here he is, holding the line. And the officer has NCOs, non-commissioned officers, which have all their little squads. So if you click on them, you can see what they're up to. And if you hover over them, you can see where they're at, why they become green. So Alpha is guarding, Bravo is sleeping, and Charlie is doing, well, basically anything, which means they can be doing recreational stuff or reading, writing letters, or having a smoke. And these guys here in Delta are working, but they don't have anything to do at the moment. But the problem here is that the Bravo is sleeping, and since this is a colony sim, they'll just go to sleep wherever they want to. So you, as the player, oh, we just woke up. So you have to find them sleeping arrangement. So early in the game, it's clever to use, like, these buildings. But obviously, they will probably be destroyed in the course of the battle. So you put down the necessities, put down the sleeping spots, and the AI will find them out. But you would like to keep them away from the front, because, well, you don't want to be waking up all the time, and sleep is very important. And if you've ever been sleep deprived, or if you own small children, then you probably know what I mean. So, uh, and yeah. And in the future, like, the, the buildings will be like forts, because this is uh, Western Europe, there's a lot of farms and meadows, so very few buildings, but they will be exceptionally important. And speaking of buildings, in this map, it's kind of, there's a graveyard and a church which separates your front line and the enemy over here. So it's, uh, it's actually inspired by the All Quiet on the Western Front, the original film from, from, film from 1934, which I would definitely recommend anyone to check out. It's a beautifully well done film and was banned <laughs> until the 60s in some countries because it was too realistic. So now we have the shifts all sorted out. You can change them. They are, this is the day guard, so now they're guarding during the day, but they chill at other times, or you can let them guard by night, or do night work or day work. Here you can see all the little guys. And in the future you'll be able to mix and match between squads and also identify exemplary soldiers. Um, so let's move ahead. Let's actually start. Let's set up a machine gun. Now everything snaps in the game, so the machine gun will be over here. And the enemy will be attacking in waves from all kinds of different directions, except in this build, which is exciting. There's actually, a, this is a very early work in progress, a melee attack. So the enemy sometimes will attack in melee. This is way more difficult to defend against. And it's very exciting, but we still haven't implemented that our soldiers will fight back in melee. So make sure you can shoot them down before they get into the trench. So um, let's actually start by connecting this trench with this one over here. And as you know, it's many ways you can get creative about it. So let's actually make a, a classic one. So if you do it like this, this is what they found out later in the war, is that it's much easier to defend if the trenches are like in this, this different formation. If they're all just direct lines and the enemy get in, well, then they can shoot flanking fire down the trench and you don't want that. And also early game, if you wanted to be really expedient with with workings and uh, work orders and trench building, you could actually just, whoops, you could actually just make certain that there are more guys working because at the moment you only have these eight guys working, oh, well actually more, but they're working and 
But if you wanted to, you could put all of them on the same shift. They would work really quickly, of course, but then nobody would be watching the line. So you have to be careful about this. Okay, the night is ahead soon, and here is the command bunker. And if you want to, as you're playing, trying out the game, you can ask for more units and resources. That's up to you. But in this mode, we have about 30 soldiers. But if you want to, you can add more. But there will be, you will get reinforcements and supplies at 7.30 each morning. So let's finish this one. And um, because we have melee incoming, so uh, we have to be careful. Because the melee soldiers attacking will try to get into the trench. So because this is also a colony saying we have to think about the kill box. So we could actually set up a trench step over here. So that would kind of lure the AI. And let's make it easy to defend this area. Let's go to the research tree and just unlock the um, the basic um, barbed wire, and let's set up a little bit over here so we can try to try to dictate where the AI will come down. So they will try to get into the trench over here. So let's set up. This is the defensive positions I've spoken about before. You can of course click them, and if you want them to be important, you increase the priority. So now the AI will always fill up, and if you are Certain that the enemy will attack in force. This death gun system now has changed, so it's either normal, which means that the soldiers just work according to their shifts. But if you go on higher alert, that means every man, everyone sleeping or working will go and report, whoops, to the front line. And as you can see, they now react to the incoming shells. And now we have connected the new trench. So let's set up defensive positions. Press defense. These are the this is what's called the parapet, and they are for to provide cover for the soldier in front. And then you can also put the parados, and they are designed to protect the soldiers from shrapnel from the back. And also makes it difficult for the enemy if they take your trench, then they need to switch everything around, which is annoying. So this is what it costs to lose a trench in the game. All right. Okay, we also have forgotten about logistics in the game, so. It's quite dark at the moment, so let's actually set up some um, let's set up some storage zones closer by. Let's put down sandbags over here. So now the AI will move them from here, so it's a bit closer to get. Oops, that happened really quickly, so you always have to be on guard. And also, you can always shoot your own um, artillery on the enemy if you want to, but it's expensive. You get 50 command points each day, and the officer can shoot it. And now we're back at dawn, and the soldiers are all now either... The second shift is not sleeping, and we have somebody guarding. And also in this map, it's interesting to think about as well getting closer to the enemy position. And one of the ways we designed this map is that you will be inspired to move into the churchyard. And the churchyard has, um, basically this is part of the 3D game, is that where do you want to set up like a line of defense? Because this is quite open this field, but there is a tiny little elevation over here. So the enemy has a little bit of a oh here they come. Oops. And when trenches collapse, it is actually possible um, to upgrade them so they will be more resilient to L shells. You can use the upgrade, but this later on you will have to basically craft from trees. And the trees can be turned into either uh, branches or logs and the branches can be turned into thickets which is this old way to make trench walls and these are quite good they increase the hit points but for places like here where there's a junction it's actually better to go up for the bigger more expensive upgrade which is the wooden logs because here there's no um, there's nothing that supports the other side of the th of this part of the trench so this is a great spot to s expand to sp really expensive stuff like the locks and you can be quite uh, there will be also in the future more updates of this including metal <coughs> corrugated iron and more ways including floorings to protect your trenches from the enemy and the elements because rain and 
land erosion will also play a part. So as we get closer to the enemy, we just set up. We cannot always defend everywhere, so you have to choose what are the hot spots you want to defend. So you're increasing priority, the AI will go to those spots. If you want more units to be guarding, you can just set another one on the on guarding. That means they go to sleep at night. And if you're in worried, then you just confirm that you're on high alert and the runner is dispatched to find the officer and let him know that now we're on high alert, so everyone is defending. So you can have many, 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 many guard points and they will all go and defend. And also remember that machine guns are always of highest priority because obviously we want always someone to be on the machine gun, especially if the enemy attack. And usually when the enemy attacks, the AI will usually send artillery shells, uh, preemptive artillery strikes. And if they do hit your machine guns or frontline troops, then they will, you will have to think about shifting the guarding. Here they come. Oh, this is the probing squad. So these basically, some of these guys will actually try to Yeah, they will try to get into the trenches. So if they're poorly <laughs> defended, yeah, you will get swamped. And I have lost this map really quickly in the last few days with melee attacks. So that's kind of all the new stuff in this one. And yes, also, if you want to, like, if there is something in the way, because this is a game in development, if you need to get rid of these fences, you can just hover over, press B, and, well, you can explode everything mostly, except, well, not the church and the buildings don't um, support that yet. And if you want to, you can press P on your, on your keyboard, and then you have Terran deformation, and this is very exciting, and... This is still quite experimental, so this might crash the game if there are too many craters. But you know, I have done playthroughs which nothing happens, but if you do pl press many times in the same spot, there might something <laughs> might crash. But this is uh, also, do that on your if you want to. But it does, obviously, is part of the big vision of the game, that everything will be deformed and there will be different kinds of artillery craters and artillery shells. And obviously that eventually everything will collapse. And buildings like this church will be very, very expensive. And you can actually use it. You can put down uh, sleeping spots and arrangements. And, and this is actually quite often used in both First and Second World War of using these kind of buildings for protection. But also in the game, in the big, especially when we add artillery, this will be an observation point where you can try to see the enemy. But remember, if you can see them, they can see you. And usually in all modern conflicts since the 1860s, usually armies try to obliterate any points that gives the enemy an advantage like this observation point. So that would also be part of future gameplay. And yeah, you can pause the game. You can also open the time debug and change and double click. Then you can just change what to see, what time of day it is and stuff. And... But if you want to get rid of all the enemy soldiers, if you're trying something new and you're about to lose, you can just press the um, insta-kill all enemies, then you'll get rid of them. So if in, in case if you don't want to lose the match and if you're trying to do something, because if the enemy captures this, it's game over. So if you want to get rid of them, just insta-kill. So thank you for watching. Any questions, please let me know. And I'll, I'll look forward to hear what you think. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.